uh, we will try on the side of the respondents to be precise and concise. Let me start off by thanking uh, Dr. Ogada and Mr. Ongoya for their very kind remarks about the small role I have played in the development of our constitution and the law. Thank you very much. I also want to thank Council for the civility that has been observed in uh, the presentation of this matter. And I do hope that uh, the respondents will also remain civil so that uh, we extend uh, the proper respect that the court deserves. I am instructed by the Honorable the Attorney General, the very eminent Dorcas Odwar, our first female Attorney General, And she instructs me to inform the court that she is here because Article 156, sub Article 6, enjoins the Attorney General to promote, protect, and uphold the rule of law and to defend the public interest. The people of Kenya have a public interest in the maintenance of a stable government and in the protection of the sovereignty of their republic. And that republic is underpinned by having continuity in the institutions of government, be they the legislature, be it the judiciary, or be it the executive. We shall be submitting that the public interest is in favor of an expeditious disposal of matters that affect the continuity of government and that imperil the stability of the state. And that human rights are not only accorded to individual applicants, they are also accorded to the collectivity called Kenya and the people of Kenya they also have human rights. I agree with my learned friend, Mr. Ongoya, who is a very eminent uh, constitutional jurist and a practitioner of the constitutional law. I agree with him when he says, the Constitution 2010, in many ways, is transformative, has introduced more versatility in the protection of human rights. That is true. I also agree with him when he says that the Constitution must be construed in a manner to give full effect and protection to the rule of law and to human rights. But I further submit this, that the Constitution too must be interpreted so as not to create an absurdity. The Constitution must be construed so as not to create an absurdity or to put it in conflict with itself. What is the purpose of the Constitution? To establish the state. What is, its father, uh, what is its father purpose? To provide for democratic government and to protect the rule of law and to protect human rights. These are not 
These are not in contradistinction. These are not at war with each other. A stable government, a sovereign people, and human rights are not in conflict with each other. They are in harmony. It is the work of the court to interpret in order to create that harmony. When the court is, inter is, is invited to interpret the constitution so as to create an absurdity, it must refuse to do so. This afternoon, you are being invited to interpret the constitution to create an absurdity. Why is it an absurdity? The deputy chief justice of the Republic of Kenya can swear in the president of the Republic of Kenya into office. What a huge power. What a huge authority. The chief just the deputy chief justice of the Republic of Kenya can empanel a panel of judges can uh, sorry can uh, can appoint a tribunal to remove the president from office. What a huge responsibility. What huge authority. But wait a minute. The Deputy Chief Justice cannot assign duties to judges. Pray, my lords. What then does the Deputy Chief Justice deputize? What does she deputize? In many jurisdictions, like those referred to by the uh, distinguished counsel on the other side, in many jurisdictions, including the United States, there is no office of deputy chief justice. In the Supreme Court of the United States, there is the chief justice and associate justices. In Kenya, the drafters of our constitution, and if I may say so myself with a bit of humility, I was one of the draftsmen. Knowing that in other countries there was no office of deputy chief justice, decided in Kenya there shall be an office of chief justice to deputize the chief justice. In doing what? I'll be very brief. That is to be found in the constitution itself and in the in the statute, and uh, uh, I think uh, I will read my, I will leave my learned friend, Ms. Mr. Ngobo, Ngobo, to deal with that. But let me, in the two minutes I've been granted by this gracious lady, make one point, two points. <laughs> Beneficiaries of ex parte orders stand before this court and say, only they are entitled to ex parte orders. They are here to, to complain that they went before Judge Mongo, they went before Judge Muita, they got ex parte orders with finality, and that was okay. But when the Attorney General went ex parte and all her prayers were refused, except the prayer to send the matter to the Chief Justice, she was wrong. How is that possible? My Lord, I want you to remember, because it is in your file, the transmission from Kiragoya is in the portal. Unless my learned friends are saying they have never seen the portal itself. Yeah? The registrar in Kirinyaga, Honorable Wanyama, writes a letter, yes? saying, good evening, kindly find attached the document for your attention. It has a time to the Chief Justice. It is on the 18th, uh, and it is, for, it is 15.45. It is 3.45 in the afternoon. So when counsel repeats again and again, things were done at night. Well, a lie, a lie can, 
can go halfway around the world before truth wears its pants. It is not true. It is not true. The registrar sends the order at 3.45 in the afternoon. I stop there so that my learned friend may continue. Uh, thank you.